Over 12 million Xbox consoles are sold every year, each one built through a high-precision process involving robotics, global suppliers, and extreme testing. From the custom chips to the final packaging, every detail is engineered to deliver flawless performance. But behind all that power is a factory story most people never get to see. And we will uncover it all here at The Process World. Xbox's Origins and Design Mission The Xbox didn't start on an assembly line. It started in a meeting room inside Microsoft, where engineers, marketers, and designers all came together with one goal, to create something that could compete with Sony and Nintendo. This was about building a new world of entertainment that felt powerful, fast, and easy to use. Before anything was manufactured, the focus was entirely on understanding gamers. What kind of performance did people expect? What frustrated them with current consoles? What would make a device feel next-gen even years after release? Microsoft's team studied gaming habits, ran test sessions, analyzed heat maps of controller use, and even tracked how long players stayed in certain game menus. All of this shaped the foundation of the Xbox we know today. But how do they make it in those factories? Well, before we get into that, please leave a like and subscribe for more amazing videos like this one. Now moving on! The Design and Planning Phase You see, once the Xbox concept was locked in, Microsoft's next move was to turn that big idea into something that could actually be built. This is where the Design and Planning Phase kicks in. It's not just about making a cool-looking box. It's about creating a system that runs fast, stays cool, and doesn't fall apart after hours of gaming. Microsoft pulled together teams of engineers, designers, and system architects to map out every single detail. They had to choose the right processor, the best graphics unit, and the most efficient cooling system. Each of those parts had to work together smoothly. If one thing overheats or drains too much power, the whole system suffers. And it's not just the parts, it's how those parts are placed. Ventilation has to be perfect, or the heat gets trapped. If the fan isn't strong enough or placed properly, the console can get loud or overheat. So they tested different layouts until they found one that gave the best performance without making the system bulky or noisy. They also focused on size, weight, and power use. The Xbox needed to be compact but strong, it had to stay quiet while pushing out high-quality visuals. That takes a lot of coordination between teams. Electrical engineers working with thermal designers and industrial designers checking in with component suppliers. This phase takes months, sometimes years. But once everything is approved, the shape, the parts, the layout, that's when the real building process can begin. Before a single Xbox gets built, Microsoft needs to gather its most important ingredients. And these parts don't come from just one place, they are pulled in from all over the world. In fact, the components used to build an Xbox are sourced from more than 15 different countries. That includes the brains of the console, the memory, the storage, and even the materials used to make the outer shell. At the center of it all is the custom processor and graphics chip, designed in partnership with AMD. These are highly advanced and take months of development before they're even ready for production. The memory chips are supplied by companies like Micron. The SSDs? Those usually come from Western Digital or similar storage specialists. Every supplier is carefully chosen because even one faulty chip can ruin the entire console. Microsoft works with massive manufacturing partners like Foxconn, Flex, and Wistron to manage this entire global supply chain. These companies help coordinate the arrival of parts from different countries so that everything lines up just in time. If the chips arrive too early, they sit and collect dust. Too late, and the entire factory grinds to a halt. This part of the process is like managing a huge moving puzzle. Microsoft has to make sure every component lands in the right factory on the right day in the right quantity. And while that's happening, the teams are already preparing for the next wave of shipments. Once all the parts have been sourced, it's time to build the real guts of the Xbox. This stage is where technology meets precision. Every tiny chip, every circuit, every connector is crafted using machines that are accurate down to fractions of a millimeter. 
And in a device as complex as the Xbox, there's no room for guesswork. The process starts with the motherboard. This is the base where everything gets connected. Robotic arms carefully place tiny electronic parts onto the board using a process called surface mount technology. It's fast, accurate, and completely automated to avoid any slip-ups. The central processor and graphics unit, both designed with AMD, are then installed with exact positioning. These two pieces are the heart of the console, and they need perfect alignment to run properly. Next, storage components like the SSD are added. These parts control how fast games load and how smoothly everything runs. Even a small delay in the drive can ruin the experience, so every unit is tested multiple times before it moves forward. The casing and outer shell are created using plastic molds. These molds are made in advance and shaped to give the Xbox its strong, clean look while still keeping the weight low. Every finished part, no matter how big or small, goes through strict quality checks. If it doesn't meet Microsoft's standards, it gets pulled aside immediately. Now that every component is ready and tested, the real show begins, putting all the pieces together. This is the stage where the Xbox finally starts to look like an Xbox. The assembly process is a mix of precision robotics and skilled human hands, all working in sync on the factory floor. It begins with the main circuit board. Workers carefully secure it into the frame, making sure it's aligned just right. From there, machines help install the processor, graphics chip, SSD, and power supply. Each part is handled with extreme care because even a small misalignment can cause performance issues later on. Once the internal parts are locked in, the cooling system goes in next. The design of the fan and heat sink is based on months of planning, and now it's installed to keep the console cool during long play sessions. Everything is tightened, secured, and double-checked. After that, the outer casing is mounted. The shell snaps into place with custom clips and screws, and the power buttons, USB ports, and HDMI connectors are added. Then comes the visual check. Workers inspect each unit from every angle to catch anything out of place. The entire process is designed to be fast, but nothing is rushed. Every Xbox has to be perfectly assembled before it can move on to testing. The factory setup is designed like a system of stations, where each console passes through different stages until it's complete. And by the time it leaves this line, it's a fully assembled machine, ready to be tested for real-world use. The first step is to check that the console powers up correctly. Technicians run through all the basic functions – lights, buttons, USB ports, HDMI output, and audio. If even one of those doesn't respond, the unit is immediately pulled for inspection. Once those basics are cleared, performance tests begin. The fan speed, cooling system, and power draw are all measured. Engineers look for any signs of overheating or abnormal energy use. Then there's the stress test. This is where the console runs demanding games for extended periods while being exposed to hot and cold temperatures. It's designed to simulate real gaming conditions and spot any signs of failure under pressure. Even the Wi-Fi and internet connection are tested. If the device struggles to maintain stable network performance, it gets flagged. These tests are strict for a reason. If a console fails here and somehow makes it into a customer's home, it could lead to serious backlash. Only the consoles that pass every test move forward. The rest are either repaired or removed from the production line entirely. By the end of this phase, Microsoft is confident that each unit performs exactly the way it should. No guesswork, no shortcuts. Once an Xbox passes all of its tests, it's finally time to get it ready for delivery. The Xbox is placed in a sturdy package designed specifically for protection. Inside the box, foam inserts and tough cardboard keep the console, controller, and cables locked in place. Nothing should shift around during shipping. Every part has its own slot and everything is packed in a way that reduces the chance of damage, even during rough handling. The packaging also includes the basics, like the power cable, HDMI cord, quick start guide, and sometimes bonus materials depending on the version. Each box is labeled with barcodes, product codes, and tracking info. This helps with inventory management and also ensures that every unit reaches the right destination. Microsoft pays close attention to how the box looks too. 
From the color and layout to the quality of the cardboard, every design choice is intentional. And they've also made sure the packaging uses recyclable materials to reduce waste. Once packed, the sealed boxes are stacked on pallets and moved to the next phase, global distribution. At this point, the Xbox is ready to leave the factory floor and start its journey to retailers, warehouses, or directly to your doorstep. Every detail, from the plastic wrap to the barcode, is checked and confirmed before it ships out. And that's it. Now to you. If you had access to Microsoft's Design Lab for one day, what feature would you add to the next Xbox? Share your thoughts in the comments section below, leave a like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more amazing videos like this one.